Indeed, thank you for staying with us here on Farm Kenya. Of course, today we have told you that we are working around the conversation that is running before June the 5th, which of course marks World Environmental Day. And just to remind you that we have in the studio a panel of young guests, uh, young Kenyans who of course are at the forefront of this initiative, Calvin Jaguna comes officer at SMAC Foundation and Dan Canogeno, he is the patron at WJ Modolo Foundation. And before we get into that conversation, we want to take a quick look at the things that young Kenyans are doing that are making a difference. And we want to learn how each one of us can contribute to a sustainable and greener Kenya to set the pace for this discussion that's coming ahead. Here is our weekly segment of Farm Guide. Take a look. Almost universally agreed now that climate change is caused by humans and it's on its track to wreak havoc on the planet. <coughs> Scientists release new studies every year, if not every month, demonstrating the effects climate change has already had on the earth and projecting the damage it will cause in the future. <laughs> Storms, droughts, floods, famines and mass extinctions are just a few of the consequences in store for our home if we don't do something about the problem and fast. The main driver of climate change is the greenhouse effect. Some gases in the Earth's atmosphere act a bit like the glass in a greenhouse, trapping the sun's heat and stopping it from leaking back into space and causing global warming. Many of these greenhouse gases occur naturally, but human activities are increasing the concentrations of some of them in the atmosphere, in particular carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide and fluorinated gases. Some of the causes of the rising emissions include burning coal, oil and gas producing carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide, cutting down forests, increase in livestock farming. Cows and sheep produce large amounts of methane when they digest their food. Fertilizers containing nitrogen produce nitrous oxide emissions. In order to stop global warming completely, carbon dioxide emissions have to reach net zero worldwide. In addition, reducing emissions of other greenhouse gases such as methane can also have a powerful effect on slowing global warming, especially in the short term. But with so much uncertainty, we are better off investing in a different kind of machine, one developed in nature's own laboratory over millions of years and with a proven record of safely drawing down gigatons of carbon dioxide. Trees. Kenya is among the unsung climate heroes leading the way in climate change mitigation and adaptation. The Kenya Forest Service has remained steadfast in pursuing the forest cover that had been initially set at 10% by 2030. The target has been achieved courtesy of the political goodwill and support from various stakeholders in the environmental sector. Our government has been uh, keen on increasing the forest cover. Actually, the president the other day spoke about um, having 30% forest cover by 2050 and uh, I'm here today we may have uh, you know within this year maybe we can do uh, at least 10% you know if we I believe we can do at least 1 million trees you know annually uh, then we can be able to introduce uh, we can be able to contribute to that uh, that very very ambitious goal if you do not take care of our environment you know then we get into a lot of conflicts um you could you you had uh, the other time when uh, you know when when covid came uh, you know where people were gasping for oxygen you know if you go to hospital people were gasping for oxygen you know and um, people had to buy oxygen tanks to be able to to get oxygen so if we could only plant trees then um, we can be able to overcome you know pandemics in the future uh, you know and that's why one of the reasons why uh, we are making this connection uh, you know people who don't take care of the environment are more prone to conflicts they're more prone to hunger if you are not able to feed your children <laughs> 
Global Peace Foundation, Chandaria Foundation, Safal Mabati Rolling Mills Foundation, the Standard Group PLC and the schools have continued with their commitment to champion youth participation in peace and environmental stewardship. Global Peace Foundation, through its service arm, encourages peaceful cohesion and youth volunteerism in community service. The partnership aims at accelerating the one million annual tree growing campaign that seeks to promote the country's efforts in achieving the 30% tree cover. This has culminated in the planting of 1,000 fruit trees in both Mombasa and Kilifi counties, targeting schools and vocational institutions. So our goal here is actually to see this goal being achieved by the year 2030. At the same time, we are here to actually rally, or rather call upon young people to be in the front line. Our constitution talks about youth participation, or rather all citizens' participation. So at this particular time, we are urging the young people by virtue of their numbers that they can come out in those big numbers, actually by conserving the environment. We are targeting to sponsor 1,000 uh, to plant 1,000 fruit trees in Mombasa and the Kirifi County to basically make a contribution as good citizens of the world towards preserving our environment. Tree planting is one thing that we all need to take up to preserve our environment and make a contribution in our little way in our different places of work or even in our own homes. Some of the challenges within the two counties include charcoal burning, which is still a menace, and ignorance on tree growing process. Some of the stakeholders do not feel responsible in growing trees. They still feel it's somebody else's business. Unemployed youth being used by political aspirants to cause chaos in prolonged dry season, limiting the survival of some trees. Trees have remained to be a source of oxygen supply, food supply, carbon absorption and a source of alternative livelihoods and many other benefits. Their growing is essential for a healthy and sustainable ecosystem. Paul Tiongo, KTN Farmers TV. Well, quite an interesting story right there. Putting into perspective the conversation that we want to have here today about well the importance of forests, uh, reforestation, and the impact that can have on the environment and the uh, role of youth in ensuring that that uh, continues to happen. Well, let's get into the discussion now. I want to, of course, reintroduce my guests, Kevin Jiguna, uh, Communications Officer at Mark Foundation, and Duncan Otieno, uh, the patron at WJ Modolo Foundation. Both of you, Karibuni Sana. Ah, thank you. Thank you I, I want to start off with uh, a question that might seem mundane, but uh, which for most people uh, they don't really think about. We have forests. Where did these forests come from? And how come they are not continuing you know, to exist in the way that they were there before? I'll start with you, uh, Kevin. So thank you so much for the Please opportunity. Speak up, yes. Yes, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity granted. Uh -huh. So yeah, we do have forests. And uh, me answering to the question that you've asked, that they continue, they, they're not continuing the way as they used to be in the, few, in the past. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, some few days ago, I was having a conversation with someone who's be into be into the past and is still existing to now, like someone who's old. Yes. And uh, he was trying to let me know that we are the youths. This is the time that we have the energy. Yes. So we have the energy to either destroy or to either create and preserve what we found. Mm -hmm. So basically, you would find that the world has gotten into activities of cutting trees and a bit of a, I'd say we are also in a generation that some of the people would call it a don't care generation. Mm -hmm. So and basically this is our responsibility as the young people to come out and you know like preserve what we found and also to make it more better than we found it as well. But w why is it now becoming our role? Because uh, if you spoke to the person you were speaking to, mm -hmm. I'm sure he must have told you that back in the day he would never have to lift a finger to plant trees, look after trees. They were there in plenty. So what are the factors that we're talking about? Is it population explosion? Is it that there's reduced land so there's more impact on forests? Why exactly are forests not thriving? I think the emissions have also gone too high based mm -hmm. on uh, the companies that have been set up and uh, I would not say particularly say on the urban areas but uh, worldwide yes. and now that the emissions have seen, you've seen that some few days ago um, or weeks and months ago in Kenya we have uh, you know like gone through like a very very hard time in terms of like uh, the heavy floodings those heavy floodings came from uh, the prolonged rains yes. 
Yes. So long drains came like from, uh, you know, like our, the climate action was not really good. Mm -hmm. So basically, I think uh, also the world has really changed in terms of like the gases that, uh, you know, like affecting our, our, our climates and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's bring in uh, Duncan I, and I'll pose the same question. Uh, back in the day, uh, we had first in plenty. Uh, climate change was not a big deal. Uh, what has changed? And the reason I'm asking this is there's lots of young people here who might not have uh, even seen a large forest. They've just uh, grown up with this concrete jungle that we have and a few scattered trees. Well, thank you very much, Peter, for having me in the farm, Kenya. Basically, uh, probably I would say I grew up uh, seeing most of the forest, mm -hmm. like where I come from. And uh, first of all, we need to understand that the population is also increasing. Mm -hmm. And as this increases, you know, being typical of African, uh, the moment if you have sons and the moment they grow and they become of mature age, yes. then they have to cut trees to be able to create their own homes. Mm -hmm. And if they create these particular homes, you find that we are lacking space to be able to grow this. So you find in, in the population increasing, mm -hmm. this has actually uh, reduced our forest uh, cover. And uh, the people looking into places as they move also, they need that space. We have a very good example. Kiambu was uh, full of coffee. Mm -hmm. Now it is full of houses. We are planting <laughs> houses instead of planting uh, trees. Yes. Or the trees that are there, we are putting these trees and planting houses. So population is a big factor. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe now we are getting the reality of uh, every nature, they really want their space. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are looking into this particular space. And also earlier yes. days you found that there are a lot of uh, food that we'll find within the forest cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, now people are growing other fruits that were not there before, that you could actually just go and pick and uh, let the forest come mm -hmm. out. Yes. It's interesting that you put it like that, because for most people, when they talk about trees and forestation, yes. they think uh, large natural forests or the forests that people have planted move forward. Uh, but as it so turns out, uh, coffee, uh, orchards, those sorts of things are actually forests, and yes. cutting this down is actually contributing to the problem. Yes. So then, having established that that is the case, Let's then start to talk about the activities that the, the organizations that you represent are doing and what role that that then plays in sensitizing the youth uh, towards the role that they must play. Let, let me start with you, Kevin. Yeah. So why is it that uh, your foundation mm -hmm. um, is involved in this space? So uh, particularly to start in, so people have to be informed as a, at a starting point mm -hmm. so all we start uh, by doing before we get to the ground we start by informing people why is it that the question you've uh, asked why is it that the forests that we found they're not as if they were as plentiful yeah, as, yeah, as, as, as they were before mm -hmm. so people have to be inf have to be informed and then after that we, we particularly as an organization show them what has to be done to preserve it mm -hmm. yeah so then the question again I'll ask is, mm -hmm. how come people uh, don't just naturally take care of the environment? Because they used to do that before. Yeah. How yeah. come they're not doing it now? <laughs> Quite a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, basically from, from my understanding is basically maybe from how they've been brought up, what they've been seeing growing up. Uh, has it been a crucial thing, them being showing up that taking a, uh, care of your environment is important? Yes. Yeah, so basically I'd say is a way of it depends on how someone has been brought up when mm -hmm. they are growing up to what they've been seeing all around mm -hmm. yeah but basically as an organization now mm -hmm. we're trying to champion that much 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 to the youth uh for us creating awareness to them that they should know that taking care of our environment is as important and, and as crucial as much as it can mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh, let's bring in duncan well, when uh, i was younger uh we had this philosophy of you cut one down plant two yes uh, I don't know what happened because if people had actually followed through on that then maybe we'd have double the number of trees that we had before uh, but then I also noticed that commercial logging was at an all time high at some point and we literally chopped down our forests at the commercial level uh, why then does it become the business of people like you and me rather than the business of these corporations to replant the areas that they've cut down yes I think basically it is more of just uh business ethics yes uh, that is very key in uh, people understanding uh, that uh, if you are cutting trees mm -hmm. you are also cutting your life 
and uh, as my colleague has just said that uh, we just need to keep people being aware of the importance of having this particular forest and having trees around you mm -hmm. so basically in this particular campaign as our president has uh, already launched uh, 15 billion uh, trees by 2030 i think uh, by him pushing this and uh, pushing this down even to the schools yeah allows now the younger generation to start knowing the importance of uh, uh, planting trees just the same way when you are young you are uh, being told that when you cut one plant two mm -hmm. so now i think it is also the right time to teach our younger generation that it is a time to be able to bring back our forest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, let's bring in uh, Kevin. You yeah. have something to say along the same lines. Yeah, yeah just mm -hmm. to add on what he said. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's actually really, really important that actually I even saw that the other day that the government also like you know like created a public holiday on the 11th of May that it is a tree planting international day. Mm -hmm. So even when the younger generation are coming up and they say that there's a day particularly are put aside by the government, not going to school, but for only tree planting. Mm -hmm they will be aware and by the time they come they come to the ears the, the time someone is 1 to 15 to 18 uh -huh. they'll know the importance of actually you know like planting trees from when they are young to when they're getting old enough mm -hmm. i think that would really help as have a nation. you ever planted a tree yes i did how many have you planted so far have you counted uh, yeah, 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 I've uh -huh. counted because we eventually we actually even have an app. It's called the Jazamiti, Jazamiti app. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you plant, you take a picture, you say where you planted it. Yes. Yeah, I've planted a lot of trees. That, that is interesting. Why would you go that route in terms of enabling people to sort of track the number of trees that they've planted? Uh, particularly, first of all, it makes you proud as a Kenyan, mm -hmm. uh, seeing the change you're making uh, and makes you feel like you own the country. You, we own the change that we want. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's, it's a concept that it's really... You know, like um, like me being meeting a friend and telling them I planted a tree, and then they're like, I I might lie, mm -hmm. and, but now having the app and you know, like I'd be accountable for how many trees did you plant, when did you plant, where did you plant. Mm -hmm. It actually, you know, like uh, makes me proud, and you know, like I'd want to do more so that I can also go on increasing the number. And through that, I make a, the change that it's needed. We get to be the one who are making the change as the young people of this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So planting a tree is one thing, and it's relatively easy. But let's talk about the husbandry, the amount of care you have to give it to see it through to my Sustainability. Yeah, sustainability. How do you build that into this entire exercise? So basically, um, so um, just to speak on as uh, our organization what we usually do. Yes. So we have a lot of uh, drives to different parts of this country to know, you know, like to go and plant these trees. We know that planting is important, mm -hmm. but also maintaining the tree and growing it is as important as the same way as planting. Mm -hmm. So basically what we usually do, we plant and then we make plans also to go and visit and also but now we, you know when you plant a tree there are also people who live around where we plant the trees yes. we also make them aware that it's their resp responsibility to you know like take care of that and what we usually do to make sure that it is also a uh, sustainable we usually go drive back there and go and check how the trees are doing mm -hmm. and also uh keep on and encouraging them and giving them the information of how important it is with the, the community mm -hmm. yeah so i i think we'll stop for a moment there and then go back and ask ourselves uh, why this organizational approach to this? Why not just leave people to their own devices? I want to come to you, Duncan. And the question is, what is the WJ Mudolo Foundation and why it is? Okay. Now, the WJ Mudolo Foundation yes. is uh, pushing the agenda mm -hmm. of uh, a specific uh, kind of trees, uh -huh. which you are looking into fruit trees, yes. as well as what is called energy seed trees. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a new sector in this particular region, mm -hmm. which is under energy agriculture. Yes. And uh, we are taking, uh, talking about the fruit trees, but pushing it through schools uh -huh. and making the schools become the center of point where the community can also be able to learn from that point of view. Mm -hmm. And our agenda and approach is basically to ensure yes. that when you plant a fruit trees, there's extra care that you'll have into taking care of that particular tree. Because of the fruits. Because of the fruits. Mm -hmm. Because you have to look at it, the benefit. But if you plant any other trees, even when the children are playing, even football, they don't care even if the, 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 the ball falls on that tree. But if they know there's a fruit, there's an income, element out of it even the school itself will be extra careful to take care of it mm -hmm. and then with that tree it is much easier for you to take care of it grow it yourself you have the interest and there's no interest of cutting it even to make charcoal yes but if it is the other trees 
the logging is that that you are having you'll find people will go once they are mature they want to cut it yes but mm -hmm. you will find that even when you are growing mm -hmm. people tend to at least not to harm mm -hmm. the fruit trees yes yeah, so so yeah. so that essentially yes. um, puts you in a place where you're talking about specific types of yes trees, specific types of which trees. are not temporary the perennials are longer yes. life trees. longer life trees yes and also it ensures that at least there's some income you mm. will be getting out of it depending on the size that you are growing mm -hmm. or if it is just a small space yes. you can now use it for your own are you able to tell us which particular trees we are talking about we are doing assorted uh, fruit trees mm -hmm. uh, where we have the mangoes we have the oranges mm -hmm. you have the um, avocados mm -hmm. yes you have the apples so all these are the trees that you are giving to the schools you have the purpose yeah mm -hmm. so we give this to the truth uh, the, the, the the schools yes. the other reason why we are looking at the schools mm -hmm. is to ensure that uh, we have environmental clubs yes and we don't just want to have them in uh, in the form of uh, just a book set up mm -hmm. but you want to create these particular clubs to be active and even on this particular day on the world environment day yes we are calling the schools about 17 schools are coming mm -hmm. to do a competition on both the art competition and the poem competition in regards to sustainability in a, our environment mm -hmm. and this to ensure that at least they feel that there's a value into this and we encourage them to be able to grow these particular trees mm -hmm. manage them and we create for them seed beds now these seed beds you are looking into a scenario where the community themselves if they want seedlings they don't have to go far mm -hmm. where we can partner with the forestry services where they come and support these schools yes help them create these seed beds if anyone needs to grow these particular trees they can just come to the school and we expect that the school to give them free mm -hmm. then we can now be able to increase the cover yes and we ensure you grow it with the local raw materials that you have around and maintain it and then there's the sector of now the energy seed uh, trees uh -huh. the energy seed trees are basically those seeds that you can grow for you to create fuel mm -hmm. and these now you use now their seeds to press oil mm. to get this particular oil yes. to create biofuel mm -hmm. in this particular case in Kenya we are looking into creating sustainable aviation fuel yes. that's what we are driving and this now helps that these particular trees you can also get income out of them and the school becomes like the more of the aggregation point of view mm -hmm. both their income and even the students if they are unable to pay school fees this will also be able to offset some of their school fees so mm -hmm. we are looking at yes we preserve and conserve our environment but at the same time make sure that there's income element out of it mm -hmm. yes. so what sort of volumes are you looking at in order to es essentially ensure sustainability of this program you said 17 schools so yeah, no, this is just a launch yes we are launching it is a two billion fruit uh -huh. uh, trees yes. and uh, energy seed trees mm -hmm. but this we are looking into Africa yes. because the WJ Mudolo Foundation is uh, in four countries mm -hmm. as we speak mm -hmm. uh, they are we have South Africa yes Zambia mm -hmm. uh, Kenya as well as Nigeria even though on this particular day they are launching this program in two countries that is uh, Kenya and uh, Zambia so it is two billion fruit mm -hmm. and energy seed trees by 2030 Mm -hmm. yes so this is just a launching pad yes yeah to ensure that you work with this the environment clubs in schools yeah. so then the foundation itself has thought through the aggregation and processing and marketing and that sort of thing yes like uh, for the energy citrus mm -hmm. a part of the partnership you're having is with Kenya Airways because they are looking into creating producing local a uh, sustainable aviation fuel mm -hmm. And they are looking into helping the communities. Yes. And in this, they are looking that the schools become the point of contact. They become like aggregators, just like the way you have milk, yes. where there are now places where you can have collection points. Mm -hmm. So now here we make it to the schools, yes. and we know that both the school, if they have enough land, yes. and the community, they can aggregate. If you remember, you are talking about when you are young. Yes. Maybe you don't want to give your age at this particular <laughs> moment. I'm still <laughs> quite young. <laughs> now, I think if you remember, there are some years that um, we used to carry cereals and take to school for our teachers that used to stay in school. Yes. Now, in the same way, if they have grown this particular, either the fruits or the energy seeds, yeah, uh -huh. we expect the students to carry them, bring them to the school to become the aggregator. Yes. Then now, this particular production company mm -hmm. that is producing these energy seeds can actually now come and pick. Then we have other farms that can now also pick this fruit yes. and then process. Like if you have McQueen County, you're already doing very well. Yes, for the, the mangoes and other yeah, things. The mangoes yes. and the oranges. Mm. So you can actually now create a, a program that goes picking this 
and then putting into these particular factories to process. Mm -hmm. Yes. So essentially, you are also able to sort of uh, profile different areas based on their things that would do well there in yes. terms of fruit trees and yes. use those in those places. Yes. Yes. Uh, that that's really interesting. Is this has this been achieved anywhere else, or is this a first a start for uh, this week? Uh, for the for the schools. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are now starting for the schools, mm -hmm. but we have done those in uh, large scales in mm -hmm. other areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I even here in Kenya, especially for the energy seeds, yes. so we have done those on large scale. Mm -hmm. But we are looking now, how can you be able now to take this to the community level? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, qu quite commendable uh, efforts there, gentlemen. And uh, the question, of course, that then I wonder is uh, what sort of role and impact these uh, small efforts that we have here in Kenya, uh, relative, of course, in size, uh, to the sort of global pollution that we're seeing by giants like China and the U.S. But don't answer that. We want to go to a short commercial break. Mm -hmm. But when we come back, I think that would be a good place to start off. So stay with us. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Good people, my name is Brian Sumanita, Captain God's favorite host, and I'm in the heart of Nairobi City. Kulizawase Kao Meshika Showmax. What am I talking about? Showmax wamefanya ile kitu. They have revamped maze kila kitu fresh, and I'm talking about international, local, original content. Na isitoshe, ase wana kuonesha English Premier League kwa mpigo. What am I talking about? With as low as 300 Kenya shillings, unapata kutazama show marks. Na ukiona as low as 500 Kenya shillings, unona English Premier League on your mobile phone. Right now, I'm in the heart of Nairobi City. I'm going to talk to a number of people just to see ama kujua. Ase, wameshika show marks. Na kama wameshika show marks, wanapenda nini ndani ya show marks. Follow me to find out. I'll see you. Nikonae mbre mbomoza mbae nakona zungumza nae. Umesikia kusu the revamped fresh uh, show marks. Eh, yeah, nimesikia. Nipati leo nimeyona kwa matu nilipanda leo nikaipenda. Wacha. Eh. Yeah. Nini li, uli take notice na nini kwa hiyo posta? Imekua affordable for now. Eh. Yeah. 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 Gani ili kuteke? Kuna ka amount pale kali kuteke? 300 bob. Yeah. Imagine 300 bob per month unaona hivi pindi zote. Mm. Kuna kipindi ambao una focus maybe unataka kuona pale on show marks? Single kiasi ni meipenda sana. Meipenda? Eh. Hapo sawa. Eh. Uko na mabro wanapenda ball ama sana. Eh. Am pia mimi ni fan. Wewe ni fan. Wewe ni fan wa timu gani? <laughs> Do tunachapwa lakini tunaendelea tu Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal next season ni yenu. Na unajua next season utakuwa unaiona na as low as 500 Kenya shillings what? on your device, mm. yoni yani mobile phone yako, on laptop, smart TV, na inakuwa fit sana hata computer desktop, sio? Eh. Utambia nini wale wasi ambao na kuchiki pale mtaani kuhusu Showmax? Showmax ni kwa sawa na yako affordable. Eh. Eh, muhami huko. Check out the new Showmax app today for all your favorite local, international, and kids' hit shows and movies from just 300 shillings a month. Shika Showmax, streaming for Africa. Habari njema, mchezo mpya kushinda hela umewasili. Tazama utozwe ni mchezo rahisi na njiharaka ya kushinda hela ukitumia simu yako. Kuwa mmoja umamie wa shindi kila siku. Jishindi kwa mja shilingi elfu shirini. Ni raisi. Deposit kwa mja shilingi shirini hadi tusina kisa kwenye pay bill number 145656. Account number KTN. Shinda sasa hivi. Draws na wa shindi kila hour. Kumbuka. Deposit kwa mzia 20 bob hadi 99 bob. Kwa pay bill number 145656. 5656 account number KTN na unaweza kujishindia hadi 1300 The motion for the first knockout round reads this house would abandon the use of GDP as the standard index to measure a nation's prosperity. GDP fails to consider the number of poor people against the number of rich people within the society. The fact that the nation state still exists in its form means that the nation state will be incentivized to look for other measures that reflect those specific conditions. That is why doctors are going on strike. That is why they're asking questions. Why is the political class benefiting? Because you say the GDP is high, but we are not. We fail to realize that prosperity is not just about the economic growth. It's about the health care. It's about the system. It's about the education. 
one. It's about the living standards of everyone in the country. Only on KTN Home. Let's do this. This week on Manspective Africa men and relationships with their mothers i don't know sometimes i feel like some men are too close to their mothers or do you allow your mother to come and and control what is cooked in your house and you have a wife i'm a strong believer of garbage in garbage out if you are feeding yourself healthy you will give healthy out who are you listening to there are many men who have made bad financial decisions and we discussed this in the previous episodes of man's perspective they made very bad financial decisions and they never tell their wives until auctioneers knock at the door when women are organizing, they never say, okay, 10 ways to, uh, to defeat men. No, it's always, how can we get more women on boards? How can we get more, more girls to go to the university? But what do men talk about? When are men talking about um, the fundamental issues they're going through of joblessness in this country? There are so many men who are jobless right now. When are we talking about drugs and substance abuse? Only on KTN Home. Welcome back and indeed thank you for staying with us here on Farm Kenya. My name is Peter Wakaba and you can send your questions and comments to our WhatsApp line on 0759 uh, 4389. Again, 4389. Uh, and you can reach us on X and Instagram. That of course is at, at KTN Home underscore. That's our Twitter handle and Instagram handle as well. And on Facebook we are at KTN Home and on Instagram. Uh, we just told you now remember the hashtag for this show is hashtag farm kenya show and also of course maybe reach us on ktn welcome home all those will take you directly to where you can find the program now apart from that let's take a look at what today's segment on farm of the day looks like take a look <laughs> My name is Cleopa Otieno. I work with an organization called Kenya Flying Labs, and uh, we are a technology uh, organization. We one of the approved uh, drone operators in Kenya by KCA. Um, we work with drones uh, for social good uh, projects, and uh, one of the reasons we are here today is uh, because we are testing Cedar uh, drone, uh, which is a mechanism we developed here through partnership with a sister uh, organization called We Robotics. And the idea is to uh, use this mechanism to uh, plant seed balls. And our desire is to uh, have this technology uh, augment the other ways tree planting uh, is, is currently being done. So the idea is to 
uh, use a seeding mechanism that uh, holds uh, seed balls. And seed balls are basically uh, balls with seeds in them, uh, coated in charcoal matter, um, and, and, and it can be dropped or thrown by hand or uh, uh, by an aeroplane. And for this purpose, we're using a drone because of its, its advantage in terms of reaching places that would ordinarily be hard to reach uh, by an aeroplane or a human being walking, throwing by hand. way in which of course you can get uh, your uh, seeds dispersed in a speedy and of course sustainable way now back to our discussion and of course before we took the break uh, we had uh, had the conversation with my guests here Kevin Juguna communications officer at smart foundation and Dan Kanot you know at the patron of the WJ Mudolo foundation and the question I asked is with many many global uh, polluters having industrialized uh, literally centuries ago spewing carbon dioxide into the air what sort of impact are the efforts having i'll start off with uh, kevin what impact do you think uh, your so to say relatively little impact here in kenya can have on the global picture yeah that's a good question <laughs> So I think for me, it comes up as a cycle. First of all, just before I answer the question, just to go back to what you've said. Yes. We are doing the most here in Africa to plant trees, but other countries, not to mention, mm -hmm. continuing with the carbon emission thing. And not even planting trees themselves. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. So it seems we're doing the little, they're doing the most. And actually, even maybe the trees we're going to plant, like, uh, that now they're going to give out the the benefits or the, the effects will come up years later. Or they might even come and chop them down for <laughs> furniture yes. and export them. Eh? Yeah, yeah, quite, 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 quite an interesting question. So basically for us, um, basically to answer our Smart Foundation, yes. so as I said earlier, uh, just to mention something that we are currently doing right now, so we are into champi championing youth uh, to actually venture and uh, join a certain um, initiative we are launching, it's called the Youth Ambassadors. So actually the link is on open for every youth who's willing to join us. Mm -hmm. We can actually come up with uh, a certain number of youths uh, from our country and show them eventually, but we're taking them from all counties, all 47 counties. Mm -hmm. You can actually show them the importance of doing this and eventually what should be done. So that eventually when we get like um, every, in every county we get like five youths, at least from that five youth in Karen, in, not Karen, in Narok, mm -hmm. in Kiambu, in Bomet. And Karen as well. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, Karen in Nairobi. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, they'll be able to, you know, like, um, you know, like, uh, distribute the information they get from us, the knowledge yes. of how important it, it is to, you know, like, take care of our environment and share with the other, not them being that they are the ambassadors, mm -hmm. and you know, like, it will be so interesting, and uh, we need to, you know, like, maintain our environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Duncan, do you think uh, you can achieve significant impact? Uh, basically, we normally say prevention is better than cure. Yes. And since we have known and tested the devastating effect of not having sufficient forest, mm -hmm. I think we have started some steps. We, we are, I think we are making baby steps, mm -hmm. taking into account the other heavy industrial producing countries like China and uh, India and the mm -hmm. rest. Mm -hmm. But basically, I believe we as Africa the steps that you are taking, we believe that they will be able to help us when these particular issues uh, begin now to affect deeply the other economies. Mm -hmm. And I would say basically, I know some of the trees that basically we are planting right now uh, will be able to see some of the benefits probably in 10, 20 years to mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. But I believe with technology and with innovation, we should come up with those particular trees that we can start seeing the effects of uh, supporting uh, the climate change in maybe uh, three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, uh, there are certain crops that can be used on the same. Like we have the thorn uh, cactus and the rest, mm -hmm. they fall into that particular category. Within three years, we can start now seeing the benefits of um, uh, carbon mm -hmm. uh, offsetting that we can get out of that. And that can also help us as they continue having their own issues of doing a heavy industrial uh, 
uh, emissions, yes. uh, we can be able now to offset those also here. But we know that our future, the future, the generation that we have, mm -hmm. we as now the, the people that are here, we have already preserved them. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so if we think back to uh, the global perspective, one yes. of the issues that scientists have brought out is that uh, the loss of diversity, especially the loss of uh, what they call old growth trees, so trees that have been around for 150 years, 200 years, that sort of thing, getting cut down for furniture, for other things, and then being replaced by uh, short-term growth trees, uh, mm -hmm. maybe trees that will mature in 10, 15 years, and the claim then that these are not as good as sequestering carbon. How do we then start to address some of these concerns? Do we mix the efforts that we are seeing organizations such as yours both uh, coming in with ways to sort of replenish these old growth forests? Yes, I believe that is the only way that mm -hmm. uh, we can be able to achieve this because some trees, yes, they have been there and it takes time to have those particular trees, nurture them. Mm -hmm. So the best uh, way is to ensure, like you have talked about seed balls, yes. and uh, there are some forests that are there, the little forests that are there, mm -hmm. we can be able to ensure if we can get some of these species, we start growing them early, mm -hmm. and uh, doing now, uh, trying to fill up some of this particular forest, because some of these trees, you cannot grow them more like in the open places. Mm -hmm. they, they, want, they, they, they want now areas of the environments, like the ones of the already existing forest, mm -hmm even though they are deforestrated, but still you can be able to achieve those. Mm -hmm. So you just need innovative ways for us to be able to bring back some of these particular uh, enduring uh, trees that mm -hmm. can go several years. Mm -hmm. yes. I have been in places uh, in remote part of Kenya and I've seen um, places where pictures of 50, 60 years ago where there were trees, then they were cut down, yeah. then they planted commercial trees and these matured and were cut down. Uh, but because they were gazetted forests, uh, they were sort of fenced off and left alone. And mm -hmm. if you go there now, you can see the forest has regenerated. Mm -hmm. So why not try some of these approaches to in places where maybe uh, the opportunities to let forests regenerate by themselves uh, will sort of work? Basically, as, you, as I started in yes. my first uh, discussion, the population is growing. Uh -huh. And uh, our culture has also put us in certain places where we find we go cutting this. If we can have certain of um, the way people live, mm. which I'd seen that a bit also in Israel, yes. where you have communities. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to live and go and build your own home. Yes. Uh, then you cut trees. So if we can also change our behavior of, of living, that can also help this. Mm, because you find that people will be looking for space. And they'll be looking for it aggressively. Yes. And you know we have a lot of emotive issues to carry out when it comes to land. So the best thing is we need, as we also work on the environment part, some of the civil society also need to work on how can we be able to bring people to work within a community where you don't have to leave to go somewhere. We can still go up, mm -hmm. but we go up within a small setup mm -hmm. that allows us to be able to have enough land, both for having agriculture, uh, for the food security as well as also sustainable environment mm -hmm. yes so um kevin as a, as a young person mm -hmm. and when you think about the conversation around climate change mm -hmm. and uh, what has happened in the past yeah. and you now having to play this role uh to sort of preserve the future uh, do you sort of feel that the people have robbed you of your youth i mean you'd be freestyle enjoying yourself villa uh, kupanda meeting um, I'd say not really, because yes. eventually, first of all, before even me doing it, me being that I'm still there means that I'm actually enjoying doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, I, I feel like, as I started earlier saying, there's a time that we, we are the youth, we have the energy, it's either to destroy or to create it. And uh, for us as the youth, we should choose the side of creating it. But just, you know, like adding on to what uh, he's, he was trying to push. Um, so basically, I think also, you know, like... Um, coming up with strong guide, guidelines would really also help, mm -hmm. you know, like showing people the importance and also uh, giving people guidelines on what to adhere not to do and what to do. And also like, you know, like uh, the carbon producing uh, countries, uh, like the India and China, as is stated, uh, um, they can also, I think, be given guidelines It would also like really help in terms of, you know, like also not putting the efforts we're doing here in Africa way look too small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Duncan, yes. when we talk about uh, forests, uh, there are those that are in managed areas and there are those that are in, so to say, protected areas and there are those that are with the community. Yes. 
Uh, when you look at the way um, people, of course, will treat the forest, there are those who will cut them for timber, there are those who will cut them for charcoal, that sort of thing. But again, the commercial aspects. Uh, in places like uh, uh, the Rift Valley, when you look at the Mao complex, most of those trees did not fall to people burning charcoal and, and, and uh, fire. They literally went to commercial way. And the logging companies, which are still active in these places, how then do you balance uh, the commercial aspect and the need to industrialize and uh, produce products that people will use with the need to keep uh, these things in place for climate uh, change concerns? So as to say that you're checking uh, the things that we're saying and moving in a positive direction rather than backwards. Yes, when it comes to the commercial um, aspect of the environment, especially in, in regards to timber, mm -hmm. uh, I want to start from the bit of uh, the approach we need to have. As I discussed earlier, there are certain trees that have more commercial value without having to cut those particular trees. Mm -hmm. So the first commercial angle is from the food security angle. Yes. And the food security angle is that's where we talked about having the ones of the fruits. Then there's now the second level of commercial is where you now do the energy uh, seed mm -hmm. uh, trees. Mm -hmm. And these same energy seed trees, you can also use them to now create briquettes as well. Mm -hmm. the, like when you press the oil, there's yes. something normally called the, the oil, the seed cake. The oil seed cake. Yes. yes. Now, since these ones, they are non edible mm. uh, seed trees, you can actually convert them into briquettes. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to cut trees to burn charcoal. So there are other ways, innovative ways you can be able to at least still achieve the same. And since it has oil, it will even burn longer. Mm -hmm. So if we can reduce that, that we produce more of this, so instead of cutting it, we'll make sure that this particular uh, seed cake can do those briquettes. Mm -hmm. Then now when it comes to cutting of the trees, you want timber. There are certain other trees that gives even more stronger timbers like the bamboo. Mm -hmm. If we create the bamboo, bamboo you can also even do agroforestry, intercropping, okay? And use it even to have like fencing, like live fence, mm -hmm. but still it gives you the same value of the timber that you are looking for. Because now the larger timber that you are looking for, where you keep on cutting, uh, you find that the cut, by the time it grows, it takes like almost close to about five years, six years mm -hmm. for them to now start uh, to, uh, to become mature. Yes. So I think the best thing for us is also to look at which other alternative uh, sources of trees can we use for timber mm -hmm. and have a chain of income that we can generate from all these particular trees. Mm -hmm. And everyone is benefiting within the value chain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, as I know that those viewers were saying that if you plant a single bamboo tree, yes. uh, in two, three years, you'll have the uh, 15, 20, 30 different stocks. Yeah. And maybe that might move you towards the 15 billion much faster. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is very possible to be yes. able to get that. Uh -huh. And we just need to ensure that, because now we also have the, the um, high resistance mm -hmm. uh, variety of bamboos, mm -hmm. uh, uh, trees. And if we can be able to create that value, yes. yes. Actually, for bamboo trees, as you've said, we can actually get the 15 billion trees even within uh, three years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. So, so yeah. the question then many people are asking mm -hmm. is the fact that we've heard about all these uh, funds at the global level for climate change. Yes. Uh, there's the loss and damage. Uh, there's uh, we hear about carbon markets mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. How can efforts such as what your organizations are doing enable those funds to trickle down to more 90 on the ground? Uh, basically, the organizations, the only thing is that whenever you have such kind of things, when it is something new and everybody is not aware of them, yes. there are so many brokers in between. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it doesn't either trickle down to yes. the people that are supposed to get this carbon credit, mm -hmm. and, uh, or you find that they don't even get it, or people don't know. Yes. That you have an environment, you have a small forest, like you say, you might have your own forest somewhere. Yes, you might have a and, forest somewhere. Uh, uh -huh. This particular forest, you don't know, there's somebody within your community uh -huh. has already captured, taken the satellite of all that, and they're already earning carbon credits. You, you don't know. In fact, we saw that yeah. someone had monetized the movements of uh, pastoralists. Yes. And they're saying that they've taught them how to not eat in one place. Yeah. And you know, Mbuzi is in a jisongesha too. Kimaliza nyasi inaenda two kilometers in a simama inakula. And someone has said they, they've created a pattern to enable them achieve sustainable use of pasture. Yes. And they're making money. <laughs> so <laughs> so basically, to take this to the community, yes. like um, within our foundation and the network, mm -hmm. 
uh, we have created uh, a network that can allow mm -hmm. this particular credit to go down to the community. And that's why when we are looking into this particular planting these trees within the schools and the school supporting the community, then we can be able now to monitor and ensure that this goes deep mm -hmm. and to the people that are down there. So we just need to create levels that uh, these levels allows this thing to go to the community. And I believe the government is working on some regulation to allow the trading of, carb uh, of the carbon mm. credits. Yes. Now, once this is done and the regulations should actually allow the people that are on the ground to get the larger share. Mm -hmm. And if you are more of an agent that is doing the trader, I believe ideally you should not take more than even 20% uh, or even 10%. Mm -hmm. Leave the rest that goes to the community so that they can also be able to maintain these particular trees because they will see the value that if we leave these particular trees, we will be able to get value out of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what you should be able now to uh, propel mm -hmm. uh, to the people. Uh, let, let's go to Kevin and talk about technology and the role that that then can play. Uh, not just in sensitization and tracking and sustainability, but also putting money into the pockets of the people on the ground. Uh, do you foresee a situation where the app can start to enable people who are okay. taking the credit for creating trees? Mm -hmm. Your app, uh, if I've uh, taken a picture of me planting a tree and I'm uh, saying I've done that maybe a hundred times, I start to see some money coming into my pocket. Uh, whether you turn this into a competition or some other sort of way, but that's big motivation, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically for me, I'd, I'd approach it this way. Yes. So for them to make sure that the funds that, you know, like they're actually releasing that they get the people to the right hands uh, as a user. Yes. I think before them releasing the funds, they should actually uh, go to the ground themselves and actually, you know, like meet, meet the people who are supposed to get the funds. And then in terms of like, you know, like accountability, they yes. should always get to, you know, like keep in track and keep in touch with them. How is it going? We released the funds. We wanted to plant like uh, two million trees. Did you buy the trees? Why did you plant the trees? Um, so I'll give you an example. Okay. Uh, like Ipia County got 185 million shillings, I think. Uh, but then uh, at the event where this money arrived, uh, to Kastia, they're building roads. They're going to buy ambulances. They're going to put up health centers and that sort of thing. Do you think that's money in someone's pocket? Basically, uh, the challenge that people like that are facing is there will be very little ownership because most people cannot see uh, these benefits as accruing directly to them. But with uh, mobile telephony, this thing is direct. It's in my pocket. It knows who I am and that sort of thing. So technology then leapfrogs all these challenges. Let me just pick it, uh, Peter, on, yes. uh, on this with the technology that we have, like the JASA meeting yes. that uh, they have uh, within our model. Oh, we are also in the process of creating what is called sour trees, which is also still the same mm. structure. Mm -hmm. And as I've told you, we already registered with certain, uh, certain carbon credit a trading organization. Uh -huh. yes. And the approach and the structure they have given, of course, they have given us a structure. They want you being the one like in the middle, yes. you cannot take more than 20%. Mm -hmm. uh, basically just to monitor and do all that. Now, the rest of this money should go direct to the person who planted that tree. Mm -hmm. So it means with the mobile now, we can actually be able to see how many trees have you planted and or how many trees are you growing? Mm -hmm. Let me use that term. Mm -hmm. How many trees are you growing? Mm -hmm. Now, this number of trees, we can be able to track it. Now, when the trading is done and the certification is already done, when the payments are being done, it will come directly. Just the same way you get money, you'll mm -hmm. see a message coming into your phone. Just yes. the same way you have for m mm. You'll just see a message coming in yes. that you have gotten this particular money towards this. And also that, it also allows you that now you can take good care of that particular mm -hmm. tree. So basically, these particular apps that we are all having yes. with the technology, we can have that money go to the people directly. Mm -hmm. Now, within that particular structure is what you can create. Yes, you have the county. They also need to provide yes. certain services. Mm -hmm. So you can say, out of this structure, it you can decide maybe 20% goes to the county. So mm -hmm. if they want to make roads, yes. that's up to them. Mm -hmm. But at least we know that the people that will take care of this particular trees yes. have already gotten their shares. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are almost at the end of the show and I want to take just a minute uh, to let each of you have their last sentiments. I want to start with you, uh, Kevin. Uh, last remarks in terms of uh, what we've talked about and the impact uh, that the youth can have on uh, uh, the environment, sustainability in terms of uh, the efforts that we're making and of course towards World Environmental Day. Okay, so thank you so much for this opportunity once again. 
so basically um i'd say we are the youths um just to you know like speak for the other youth eh? mm. so we are the youths and uh this is not my responsibility it is our responsibility so when we picture it uh, as that way that would really 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 mean a lot to you know like me to the other youth are on the side to the other and other and another and another and we should feel like we own the country it is not that uh, it is uh, the responsibilities of akinawaze it is everyone's responsibility as a kenyan you know like to champion for you know like um, our environment and also to take su such kind of uh, environmental you know like uh, activities very very seriously mm -hmm. and uh, based on our organization actually that's what we actually really 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 push in terms of you know like actually one of the things we're doing is we are actually introducing youths to farming because mm -hmm. eventually we've seen a lot of people think that a kukwa mkulima is a is a dirty job so everyone wants i don't know saying that the white collar job is is a bad is a bad yeah. is a bad route but you're looking very smart there yourself <laughs> thank you <laughs> smart yeah. yeah yeah so basically yeah. we're trying to you know like also educate people and youth sorry and to also show them the benefits that they can get while yeah. they get into into youth, uh, into into farming yes basically one of the things we're pushing is getting youth to farm which is uh, under food security because yes. we eventually, eventually uh, believe as a foundation that Kenya we have the capabilities and uh, all the resources needed you know like to feed our country yes. second mm -hmm. going to climate action mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you uh, let's come to you Duncan thank you very much uh, Peter mm -hmm. for giving us this chance and uh, what I just want to encourage the young the youth and the older generation that had seen the benefit of having the environment around us, mm -hmm. that this is a serious issue, that we need to take it very, very seriously. And just like the way we know that water is life, now we need to know that trees is equally the same category. And we need to push this right from the younger generation. And uh, for that reason, it is my humble request mm -hmm. to invite as many of the young generation, the schools around Kajiado yes. County, especially senior, we will be holding our 2024 World Environment Day. And that day we'll be launching uh, the 2 billion fruit and energy trees mm -hmm. uh, to the schools. And this we are looking into by 2030. So we are requesting that many schools around Sitam Children's uh, Centre we will be planting uh, 400 fruit trees that mm -hmm. day and mm -hmm. energy seed trees. And each school, we have about 17 schools coming that are already confirmed. Each of them, we are helping them to set up uh, between 50 to 100 seedlings mm -hmm. for them to be able to create seed beds that they can be able to graft and propagate to uh, support the communities. This is something that we want to run throughout the country. And we are calling people and schools to be ready and to meet us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did the uh, gentlemen thank you very, very much for that illuminating conversation. It indeed has been quite uh, eye opening. Thank you. Well, that uh, there wraps it up uh, for this edition of the Farm Kenya Show. Of course, the perspective here today, having been the role that the youth are playing when it comes to environmental sustainability, especially when we talk about the role that youth can play in ensuring that forestation does happen and that we continue to grow our forests and enable them thrive but well that's it for today my name is peter akaba the news of course continues on uh, this show again tomorrow at the same time at 2 30 uh, of course to 4 p.m but for now that's it from us to continue to enjoy the rest of your viewing and kwaheri yakonana Kuwa mkono wa mbango, unayali